Today I want to cover a low-cost multi-gig managed switch that has two 10 gigabit ports and eight 1 gigabit ports, making it an ideal switch if you're just getting into 10 gig or plan to do so in the future. If you want to find out more about the features of this switch, then stick around for the rest of this video. As I began to redo some of my networking and deploy more VLANs for better security, I found myself needing to replace unmanaged switches in a couple of my rooms with some managed ones, but I didn't want to give up having at least a couple of 10 gigabit connections for devices that needed the extra performance. Shopping around for a managed switch was a bit of a challenge as they can get quite expensive and all I really needed was something to aggregate items in each room. My goal was to keep the price down as much as possible and still have the performance I needed. Ideally, I was looking for something with three to four 10 gigabit ports, but the ones I found were over $400 and I didn't really want to spend that much. In my research, I ran across this Netgear GX110 EMX, which is an eight port managed switch with two 10 gigabit ports at a much lower price point. It also came with different mounting options such as wall mount, rack mount, and some rubber feet to be used on a desktop application, as well as being completely fanless. Let's go through the hardware and then walk through the features and configuration. Inside the box, in addition to the device, you get the two rack mounted brackets, some screws, and of course the power supply. Looking at the bottom of the device, we can see that the mounting slots that are used for the wall mount. It also comes with two rack mount brackets in the event that you wanna mount this into a rack. For my particular application, I was going to set this on a shelf in an entertainment center, so I'm going to use the included rubber feet. If we look at the rear of the switch, there's only a power connector and a ground lug along with the case lock. On the front of the switch, we have the eight 1 gigabit ports and the two 10 gigabit ports, all of which are managed ports. Now that we've seen the hardware, let's go through the interface and cover some of the features. To launch into the interface, you're going to need to type in the IP address. You can get this a couple of different ways. The first way is to look in the DHCP section of your router, or you can download the Netgear utility, which will search your entire network for any Netgear devices. For purposes of this video, I'm going to use the utility to locate the switch, and then click on the admin button to launch the admin interface. To log in for the first time, use the default password, password. And once you type that in, you'll be prompted to change it. As I've logged in before, we're not going to see that screen. Now that we're in the configuration screen, we can see that there's four main tabs across the top, and each has a submenu as well as categories on the left-hand side. The first section of the switch has all the switch information. It has the name, serial number, MAC address, firmware version, DHCP mode, and network information. On the left, we have port status, loop prevention, power saving, and discovery. Under maintenance, we have device restart, factory reset, firmware update, and save configuration, which is important once you get everything set up the way you want, and the restore configuration in case you have to reset and restore using your backup file. We'll skip over the monitoring and multicast tabs and jump to the link aggregation section where you can configure your link aggregation. I've never been really impressed with link aggregation, but it's nice to know you have it in case you want to give it a try. Next, we have the VLAN section. I'm going to skip over the port based and go straight to 802.1Q, which is the one I use most of the time, and it's pretty much an industry standard. We'll jump down to advanced. This is usually off by default, so if you're going to set up VLANs, you're going to need to enable this section first. Once you enable it, you can see the port groupings, which by default are all the ports set to VLAN ID number one. To add a VLAN, I'm going to type in 80 in the VLAN ID box and hit add button. And as you can see, the VLAN appears with no ports next to it. By clicking the VLAN membership, we can see that all the ports are untagged for VLAN one, which is the default configuration. If I go to the top and select VLAN ID 80, none of the ports are selected for this ID. So we need to change all the ports that we want to assign to ID 80 to untagged by changing the state of each port. In addition, 
Because I've designated port 10 as my uplink back to my router, I have to tag port 10 as a tagged port as well. This allows port 10 to pass all the traffic through whether it's tagged or untagged. Click apply to save your changes. Next we need to go to the port PV ID tab and assign the VLAN ID to each port that we want to change. In, our, in my example, I'm going to select port 1 through 5, type 80 in the ID block, and then select Apply. Now we can see the hardware port assignments. Looking back at the VLAN configuration, we can see that the ports have been set up on VLAN 80. However, if we look at this, we can see that Default LAN or VLAN 1 also has ports 1 through 5 as members, which is not correct and not what we want. As these are dedicated ports to the VLAN 80, we don't want any other traffic going through these ports. We need to remove these ports from VLAN number one so that there'll be isolation that we're looking for. We need to go back to the membership tab and clear the ports for one through five for VLAN one, and then hit apply to save the settings. Once again, if we go back to the VLAN configuration screen, we can see now that the ports are correctly assigned to each of the VLANs. ID 1 has 6 through 10 and 80 has 1 through 5. And port 10, which remember is our uplink port to our switcher router. To verify this is working, I plugged my laptop into port 9, which is the other 10 gigabit port which is assigned to the default LAN. And here, as you can see, it's getting the correct IP address for this particular range. I'm getting a 192.168.0.xxx. As I'm using a 5 gigabit adapter, it's only showing 5 gigabits, but at least we know it's being detected and communicating with the router correctly. Next, I plug my laptop into port number 3, which was assigned to VLAN 80. And as we can see, it's been given an IP address of 192.168.80.xxx, proving that again it's working and communicating with the router. This of course assumes that you have set up VLANs in your router first. Overall, this is really a nice switch that's completely fanless and comes with a variety of mounting options. It's built of all metal and despite having two 10 gigabit ports, it doesn't get really hot like other 10 gigabit switches I've seen. As long as you don't need more than two 10 gigabit ports, the pricing on this is tough to beat. Anyway, that's about it for today's video and please don't forget to subscribe and hit those notifications. Give this video a like if you found it useful and post your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.